We obviously don't want to sound like libs here, but we do have to say that it does appear uh, that Donald Trump did collude with a certain foreign power uh, during the 2016 presidential campaign. It's just not the one that, uh, you know, they thought it was. They got it wrong. uh, It's not the one you've been led to believe. Our true enemy has yet to reveal himself. Yeah. Yep. So oh, here we go. Revealed. Um, so yeah, this this article and what it reports should have gotten a lot more attention. I'm sure we don't have to explain to our audience why it is not. But even in left spaces, this article seemed to, or it left alternative spaces, this article seems to have flown under the radar. And it's really worth taking a look at because if if you've been somebody and if you're in our audience, this probably describes you. If you were somebody who said from the beginning, Russiagate doesn't smell right. But, yeah, I mean, some of the Trump campaign's behavior is weird. It doesn't seem to add up to Russia because God knows they went over that with a fine-tooth comb. And if they could have found it, they would have. Even from very early on, Bob Woodward was saying, yeah, no, there's really no evidence of that. From very early on, long before the Mueller report. Um But, yeah, some of their behavior was strange. Like, what are they doing? It seems like they're trying to cover up something. When you look at this article, this that's the final piece of the puzzle of this picture. Yes, their behavior was suspicious. Yes, they were colluding. But not with Russia. They were colluding with Israel. That's where some of that behavior that looks like collusion comes from. It was collusion. But not with Russia. So this is an article by James Bamford. Now, if you do go back and read this article, one thing you do have to take with a grain of salt is it does take the idea that the Russians hacked the DNC as a given. But other than that, it's very useful. So um, a recent multinational journalistic investigation revealed that Israel has become a world center for the export of election fraud, fake news, hacking of private emails, and disinformation. Connections were discovered between private intelligence firms and both Israel's Ministry of Defense and the firm Cambridge Analytica, which illegally collected data for more than 87 million Facebook users for use in the 2016 presidential campaigns of Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Isn't that funny? I thought that was Russia. It was Israel, huh? The eight-month international collaborative project involved journalists from 30 news outlets, including Israel's Haaretz, the UK's Guardian and Observer, France's Le Monde, Germany's Der Spiegel, and Spain's El País. They discovered an Israel-based global private market in disinformation aimed at elections, according to the Guardian. Among the individuals unmasked was Tal Hanan, a former Israeli special forces operative and the head of a secretive organization with the code name Team Jorge, whose specialty was weaponizing disinformation worldwide, quote, to covertly meddle in elections without a trace, said The Guardian. Hanan told the undercover reporters that his services had been used in Africa, South and Central America, the U.S., and Europe and that his company had completed 33 presidential-level campaigns, 27 of which were successful. Gosh, it sounds like all the attributes that we've been told to ascribe to Russia actually apply to Israel. Yeah, and before uh, we show this, you wanted to show the picture of the guy, so people who so people know you. who they're talking about here. Um, so there he is. And by the way, there's just a couple of people in the chat who mentioned how this story is not likely to get much press. We should have mentioned this at the top, but this story actually was printed back in March, right? This was printed way earlier this year. We mm-hmm. actually discovered this story because we're going to do another story on a future show um, talking about Israel's influence on a lot of the colleges themselves. Um, and this story was linked to as part of that piece. So that's how we sort of uh, came yeah. to find this piece. But this yeah, piece this, is from March, yeah. Yeah, this was linked in that piece. So I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. hang on, hang on, hang on. What article about uh, about election interference from Israel? Hang on, go back to the picture. 
You can go back to the guy. Yeah, yeah. You can go go back to the Doctor Evil looking motherfucker. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, okay. So I'm I'm just going to explain this because this article is like eight gazillion words. Not to discourage you from reading it, but but it is a long article, and to actually read through all this, it would have been like Andy Kaufman reading The Great Gatsby on stage. Look it up. It's a hilarious bit, but I didn't want to do that to you tonight. All right, so to fill this in, so basically, as Keaton has often pointed out, there was no love lost between Netanyahu and Obama. So um, the U.S., the EU, Russia, and the U.N., what Netanyahu called the Middle East Quartet, were about to release a report that was going to be very damning to Israel and they were going to use that as leverage to really pressure Israel to embrace a two-state solution and to give up their claim to Jerusalem as their exclusive capital. So this gave Netanyahu a vested interest in seeing to it that Donald Trump won the presidential campaign. Um, to that end, he sent this guy, who you've never heard of, Isaac Mulho. He is basically Netanyahu's guy that he sends for situations that are so delicate, he can't even trust them to Mossad. This is who he sends. So he sent him, according to the reporting, these are redacted FBI files that the nation went through for this report. But based on the descriptions and things they said about him, it's pretty clear that this is the Israeli agent uh, that they're talking about. So he needed a a way into the Trump campaign. So I bet those of you who are really familiar with the inner workings of Trump circle can guess who his backdoor access was. Roger Stone. Uh, In addition to Jerome Corsi, who's a kind of fiery anti-Islam, kind of Islamophobic harvard phd he's, he's written a lot of books attacking the liberal establishment but he's one of those who will attack islam as a religion and define all of this as a civilizational uh battle um so that was how he got his access um so not long before and this is very relevant to russiagate so a lot of the collusion narrative was that Trump's people seemed to know things they could only have known if they were working with WikiLeaks or had access to information from Assange, but they were never able to find that, right? Mueller, the Mueller report wasn't able to find that because that's not where they were getting the information. They were getting the information from Israel. So not long after Stone and Corsi finally met with uh, Mulho, um, based on the on the electronic files they seized from Roger Stone, he started uh, Googling Guccifer and DNC hack. This is a month before WikiLeaks started reducing the results of the of the hack. Uh, so where did he get that information from? Well, literally the same day that he finally had this meeting with the Israeli agent, he started Googling that. It was not Russia. It was Israel. Israel. Is our true enemy. It's Israel Jimmy. Has, it's has fucking, the fucking itself. rat is fucking Jimmy. That's like in the <laughs> Sopranos when they think big pussy. They think they. I mean, big pussy was a rat too. But <laughs> the rat's fucking Jimmy. A wire okay. got crossed. So they kept. So they kept trying to set up. Uh, they kept trying to set up a meeting with Trump personally, but they kept. They kept bringing people other people who were associated with netanyahu and the meeting would fall through so they kept only really meeting with stone and uh corsi um so uh then they uh, they actually gave him advance warning that there was going to be an october surprise which there was from wikileaks that's the was the podesta emails so going back to the article From the messages, it appears that Israel either had its own October surprise planned or was aware of Guccifer's planned release of the Podesta emails before the election. The day after Corsi suggested meeting with Netanyahu's agent, Stone for the first time publicly indicated that Podesta would soon become a target of WikiLeaks, thereby predicting the event six weeks before it happened. Quote, trust me, 
it will soon be Podesta's time in the barrel. Hashtag Crooked Hillary said his tweet. Since neither Assange nor Guccifer was a source for either Corsi or Stone, the tweet once again points to the Israeli agent who was in communication with both of them about the October surprise. The prospect of an October surprise, along with the offer of critical intelligence, apparently got Trump's attention. On September 25th, he and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, met privately with Netanyahu and Israeli ambassador Ron Dermer in his Trump Tower penthouse. Later that day, he publicly announced that if he was elected, his administration would finally, quote, recognize Jerusalem as the undivided capital of the state of Israel, unquote. Since 1947, there has been virtual unanimity within the international community and among U.S. presidents that the future of Jerusalem must be the subject of negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. Now Trump was vowing to trash that consensus along with the Palestinians and support Netanyahu's agenda. Whether Trump and the Israeli agent ever met in person is unclear. By late summer, Stone and Corsi were becoming increasingly concerned about potential charges, and to eliminate a paper trail, they began meeting only in private with the agent. What is very clear, however, is that in the end, Netanyahu got what he wanted, and so did Trump. Okay, so what does this tell us so far? So you had an Israeli agent clearly giving intelligence information to the Trump campaign, offering to help them they offered to help at several uh points in their contacts um and trump actually sat down and had a meeting with netanyahu who sent not not only the agent we've talked about a couple of others are mentioned in the article people very close to netanyahu his most trusted people so there's absolutely no way netanyahu was not directing this personally Uh, So you have the head of a foreign government very clearly interfering in an American election um, with the acceptance of that help from the campaign. This is everything you were told Russia did was actually done by Israel and demonstrably so, provably so. Uh, So on October 7th, WikiLeaks unleashed 2,050 Podesta emails that were damaging to Hillary Clinton and her campaign. October Just 7th, st- 2016, by the way, but coincidence? 2016, yes. Hmm? Yes, not this October 7th. Not this one. It's ironic timing. I didn't even I catch it that. Is. Just as Stone had predicted a month and a half earlier, but Stone's concern about potential criminal charges seems to have turned into outright paranoia. Given that he had no close links to Assange or the Russians, the likely focus of his concerns were his numerous communications with the Israeli secret agent. You see, not Putin. Israel. After all, Stone had discussed clandestine foreign intervention in a presidential election, had made arrangements for Trump to meet a foreign agent, and had predicted the October surprise. The prospect that authorities might look into any of these actions could certainly have been sufficient to rattle his nerves. By secretly assisting Netanyahu's agent in an attempt to make contact with a presidential candidate, aware that he intended to interfere in the U.S. election on behalf of his country, both Stone and Corsi could have faced serious charges as agents of a foreign power under Section 951 of the Criminal Code, which makes it a crime to covertly assist a foreign government without registering. So... January 25th, 2019, they raid Roger Stone's home. They go through his electronic devices. They find all this evidence because it's within this evidence, the FBI files that the nation built this article. Nothing happens with Israel. Nothing happens with these agents. There's no sanction against Israel. Which just goes to show you, like, they will, as much as the establishment hates Trump, they will... um, Keep their powder dry against Trump if taking the shot means hitting Israel. Means right? hitting Israel. Exactly. Like they are willing to protect even Donald Trump right. if they need to protect Donald Trump in order to protect Israel. Right. So finally, to wrap up, throughout this chain of events, including the trial, the Mueller report, and the nearly 1,000-page Senate Intelligence Committee report, no hint of the involvement of Israel was made public. 
Despite the clear violations of U.S. law and months of clandestine high-level attempted interference in the presidential election, no details were released and no congressional hearings or investigations took place, nor was there ever a hint in the press which remained transfixed by Russia. The evidence, however, suggests that throughout the summer and into the fall of 2016, Israel illegally interfered in the U.S. presidential election. A top agent of Netanyahu was secretly offering intelligence and other covert assistance to Trump to get him elected, all with virtually no oversight or scrutiny by the FBI or the U.S. media, though both had numerous personnel in Israel at the time. So this is the real Russiagate. It's Israel Gate. That is what actually happened. So the little suspicious behaviors, the clear behavior of guilt, of covering up, of trying to shred documents, it was this. It was not about collusion with Putin and Russia. It was about collusion with Netanyahu and Israel. There really was collusion with a different country. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's all, like, all you could say about that. I mean, you're right in in that, like, it did, as much as Russiagate seemed ridiculous, it was true that a lot of Trump campaign staff were kind of acting guilty, even though we, it right. was clear they weren't guilty of what they were being charged with, but they weren't exactly behaving like they had nothing to hide either. And so right. that makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. But like I said, the establishment would do almost anything to bring down Donald Trump except to expose the extent to which Israel influences our internal affairs. I mean, that's the real lesson of the story, is that, right. uh, what, you don't think the media didn't have the resources to dig into this and get of to the course. bottom of this if they wanted to? Look at all the, hey, Rachel Maddow made about Russiagate every night for two and a half years. Um, what, they couldn't have found this this out if they wanted to? Of course, but they didn't want, they wanted to pin it on Russia, but they couldn't because there was, and this also just speaks to the crock of shit that Russiagate was. Like, if they had done the, the legwork uh, necessary to uncover this, that would have just blown up the Russiagate narrative altogether, which is why they didn't want to do that because they needed that, that Russiagate narrative. Right. Right, so it served right. two purposes. Right. Um, yeah, you're right. They could have brought Trump down. They could have brought him. They could have incontrovertibly showed evidence of collusion with a foreign power based on this article. But they that is a line they were not willing to cross. It was not worth taking down Trump at the expense of propping up Israel. But this just shows you what a bunch of just bullshit all of this was. Mueller, you know, the, the, the you know, heroic Gary Cooper g-man on the case what he didn't see any of this he didn't see any of this evidence they they intentionally avoided this subject obviously the media did the government did the intelligence services did it, it's really it's it's incredible when you look at this because it's exactly what russiagate accused russia of exactly to a t and right. this is what israel provably did Please clap.